Today we are going to talk about the most important Buddhist book. One of the most important. They're all important. But the most important book, we, w we could say, we could easily say, that it's the Dhammapada. The Dhammapada has been translated so many times in English alone. What more can we say about the other languages? It has many different titles, the teachings of the Buddha, the footprint of the Buddha, the words of the Buddha, the verses of the Buddha. I brought a couple of copies. Uh, this is my own copy. Uh, this is by Venerable uh, Buddharakita. So this is available for free online. Um, there might be some, <laughs> some printed versions. You can directly download it from the Buddhist publication Society, BPS, bps.lk. One, one of the first versions I've, I've read and when I was traveling around the world was by Venerable Narada. And I, I'm very fond of the green cover. They've changed the cover now. This is available for free. It's available online. And it's available um, from the, well, this is a different uh, publisher, but uh, you, can, you can get it for free. Um, you just search around for it by Venerable Narada. And this has like a, a small little summary of the stories here. And a really, a really big one is called uh, uh, The Treasury of Truth. And uh, this is, uh, this has uh, pictures, it has, it has different, uh, a, small, a small story, summary of the stories, and uh, even to some word by word uh, analysis there. I think this is available for free too. There are many other uh, translations uh, of the Dhammapada. I encourage you to download, at least at a minimum, to download this book and have it in your electronic library. But what can, what can we say about the printed book? It's, it's very nice. It's very nice to have a printed book of the Dhammapada. It's located in the uh, Kudaka Nikaya. And there are verses spoken by the Buddha. They're spoken by the Buddha because of something that happened, an incident that happened. And when it was all finished, the Buddha, he, he let out a verse of, of wisdom, sort of like the moral of the story. This was, uh, these verses uh, are collected into the book called the Dhammapada. The Dhammapada. The stories are collected into a book called the Buddhist Legends. In Pali, uh, they're, they're categorized as the commentary stories, commentarial stories, to the Dhammapada. We have many famous stories like Chincha falsely accusing the Buddha of having sex and getting pregnant. We have the story of uh, we could say not hatred for hatred with the yakas, the yakinis, uh, eating each other's babies. <laughs> we have Pata, Pata Chara. Uh, she lost her whole family. Kiss a goat to me, who was looking for mustard seeds. The story of Chakupala, who, who lost his vision in his search for enlightenment. The Chakupala is a story that's uh, traditionally learned by those uh, students who are learning Pali to translate word by word until the whole story is learned. It's a very long story, actually. And so the verses were arranged by the, the first Buddhist council, just the verses. And they're very wonderful verses. They're verses of, of poetry. There's 423 verses. 26 chapters, and it covers uh, topics from ethical conduct, mental discipline, 
and philosophical insight. It contains uh, practical advice for daily living and spiritual perfections. Lay people and monastics will enjoy this book because of its profound wisdom, but also because it's in what we call a gata, the poetic verse. The themes range from anger management, faith, good friends, mindfulness and insight, and of course, spiritual liberation. Usually, it is more for motivation to develop the path, to motivation to escape from samsara. Because each verse is very short. The sum disciples of the Buddha could learn from a, even a half a stanza. But these are some of the most uh, some of the most uh, how do we say most intelligent uh, disciples of the Buddha who have developed the Parami for many, many, many lifetimes. The Pali poetry is, is not it's not a rhyming poetry. It's not a rhyming poetry, like roses are red, violets are blue, blah, blah, blah. They are more uh, based on the, uh, the number of beats, we could say. It's uh, rhythmic patterns, we could say. The patterns uh, continue through each line and throughout the verse, it's called the gatha. It's usually eight syllables per line, but often more. And we have uh, different weights for the syllables. So we have long vowels, we have long vowels get like two beats, and we have short vowels get one beat. We have uh, double consonants. We have single consonants, aspirated. And so this uh, forms sort of the, the way the the Pali is chanted. It's not very easy to, to translate the original intention of the poetry. The, the beauty of the poetry is within the meter, the measured verse, the Pali poetry. So when you read that, you might not get maybe the similar sounding words and how they match up and the, the way it flows together. But nevertheless, it is translated and it is uh, short and sweet. Within four lines, a profound statement can be made. You know, on these uh, social media platforms, they quote the Buddha. If they're real, if they are real quotes, it's probably from this book, the Dhammapada. It's probably from this book. How important is this book? If you want to become a PhD student at the uh, ITBMU, International Theravada Buddhist Missionary University, you have to have in memory the entire Dhammapada. They start a line, you have to finish it. They, start, they say one line in the verse, or they start it, and then you have to finish the, the entire verse. At the International Institute of Theravada, where I am right now, we are memorizing the entire Dhammapada. But we are not PhD students. We are only doing this seven verses at a, at a time. Each week we do seven verses or more. I'm doing a little bit more so I can uh, finish early, so I can study for my exams better. Right now I'm at verse 191, so I've memorized 191 verses. I've, I've done a few more, actually. There are 423 verses total, so I'm nearly done with the halfway mark. Even though I'm not able to retain them, for instance, if someone said a, a beginning of a verse, the chances of me being able to finish that verse 
very, very, very slim. Almost impossible for me. But maybe, maybe, it depends. Depends how old it is in my memory, depends on where it is, how profound it was for me to remember. But chances are I won't remember. But even still, there is a skill that is developed. We are learning the, the words, the vocabulary, and many of the polygrammar points are, a good chunk of them are actually in the poly poetry, about how words are formed together, breaking words apart, and the different uh, grammatical points we can easily see in the, in the gathas. We can see the meaning of each word, how they were put together, and then we can absorb it more also, because in order to memorize it, you have to repeat this again and again and again. So it's very important. It's a good, it's a good lesson to do. In the beginning, I didn't like it, but now it's, it's, it's okay. I'm giving a Dhamma talk on this, huh? And I think I've noticed uh, with myself, and I've, I've said this to the teacher, I've said this to some other students, I said, you know, it's getting easier now. I can memorize, I can memorize, I can memorize and recite in front of the teacher better than before. Each week is progressively better than before. I used to struggle a lot, I still struggle, but it's better than before, so we can see improvement. My, Knowledge in Pali is getting better, my vocabulary is getting better, my grammar is getting better, and my ability to memorize is getting better. So there, and we're learning uh, these phrases in detail, and I'm bringing these phrases into the Dhamma talks. Now, traditionally, traditionally, the, the Dhammapada is how the Dhamma talks, how the Dhamma desanas are done in Asia, in, in pretty much all Theravada countries. They, they say the verse and they'll tell you the story, the Dhammapada commentary story, or they'll tell you something related to it. So I haven't done much of the traditional stories, but those stories are very wonderful. The Buddhist legends which has the traditional stories, which I told you about. Uh, some really wonderful books, wonderful stories. They're really wonderful stories. I remember I wanted to read uh, these, these stories. I read a short anthology from the Buddhist Publication Society. It was like a greatest hits of stories, and I got motivated to read all of the original stories. And there was one monk, there was one monk in Naoena, and he had the books, and I heard he had the books, and I asked him if I could read the books. I really wanted to read the books. Back then, we didn't have electronic libraries like we do now. In fact, they were still copyright. Now, these stories are out of copyright. I'll get back to that later, hopefully. And he told me, he says, yeah, I have those books. They're in storage, but uh, the person who donated them told me not to let them out maybe to protect them or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's so, that's so stupid because they're in a box, they're in storage, no one's using them. I want to read these stories. I want to, I want to read the Dhamma. And I left. And then maybe a few months later, maybe two, three months later, after I'd forgotten all about it, that same monk, he was in the library and he called me into the library. I was next door. He heard my voice. He said, Subhuti, come. So I came. He's a senior monk. And I remember his, his face was, was red, actually. His face was red, but it was, it was flush with, with happiness. And he told me, he says, I'm about to offer these books to the library. You have to read every single page. <laughs> <laughs> I agreed. I think I read every single page. Not sure about the, the introduction where the author just talks about it, but I definitely read every single story. 
I think I probably read the introduction, probably because I worried about my promise. Maybe I skipped over the index. But I read every story. And as he was giving me the, the book, he said to me, you know, I cannot tell you how many times I've read these stories. And then he, he stamped the book. And I took the books and I read them. And I remember when I read this book, and this was like a real book, you know, you turn in the pages, you close the book. And I remember I would read a story. I tried to read a whole story. And I closed the book and I remember just saying out loud, sadhu, 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 because they're just such wonderful stories. This book is out of copy right now. What does that mean? Well, it was part of the Harvard Oriental series. When they decided to make the Harvard Oriental series, if I remember correctly, they asked all the scholars, they took a survey like, what are the most important books of Asian literature that should be on a scholar's shelf? That book made the list. Because, as I said before, traditionally, the Dhammapada stories and the verses are traditionally said as part of a daily Dhamma talk, an Anamodana Dhamma talk. When the donor comes with food, Usually they get a Dhamma talk. And usually we, we base the Dhamma talk on the Dhammapada verse. And we, usually, we usually tell the story related from the commentary, the Buddhist legends. Or we, we tell one of our own stories that might relate to it. But best also to, to say the original story which motivated the Buddha to say the verse in the first place. Ah, so wonderful. There's such wonderful stories. I hope that you can read. I hope that this motivates you to, to get a copy. It's available online. I think in uh, 2018, I think, it became a public domain. So it was one of the first translated books from the PTS. They had to prioritize what they're going to translate first. They only wanted to translate the most important books first. And the commentary to the Dhammapada. Of course, the Dhammapada. <laughs> of course, that was translated. But the commentary was also translated as a priority because it was important. You should look at the books that are in PTS public domain. Actually, uh, PTS just released all of their Mula Pali text, the translated Mula text into Creative Commons, actually. But a lot of them are in the public domain, actually. And these were some of the books that were translated first, like the Diga Nikaya, the long, the long discourses of the Buddha. So, that's a little bit about the commentary stories. You can get a little taste of the commentary stories by reading uh, the books with a small summary. But it's best to download this for free. You can download ancientbuddhisttext.net. Uh, there's an edited copy by Venerable Ananda Jyoti. He's a good Pali scholar and he has compiled and edited the three books into a single PDF. It's very wonderful. It's easy to search for the stories because it's in a single book. They used to be in three volumes. So it has a universal appeal. Its teachings are universal and go beyond the cultural and religious boundaries, making it a valuable resource for anyone, anywhere, for anyone seeking wisdom. It has a practical guidance. It gives a clear practical advice for many different uh, situations in ethical living, mental development that can be applied in everyday life. It gives spiritual insight, of course. It gives uh, different uh, philosophical concepts, 
accessible to the teachings put into a small piece of poetry, Buddhist poetry. And it's accessible. We have n numerous uh, translations in the English language alone. Some are available for free. Some are available for pay in the, in the paid version, the, the printed version. We even have free versions of the, of the printed. You can get a printed copy for free as well. So it's uh, accessible for many different people. So, how can I give you a little taste? I think I'll give you some verses, some verses that are, we could say are famous, that say a lot. Satchampane na kunjeye danja appam piyachito ete itihi tanehi gache devana sandike Speaking truth, one should not get angry. Give, even if it's a little when asked, by these conditions, by these three conditions, one goes to the presence of the gods. Appamado amatambaram, pamado machuno param, appamandane miyanti, ye pamandayatamata. Heedfulness is the path to the deathless. Heedlessness is the path to death. The heedful do not die. The heedless are as if they are already dead. Sambe sankara anichati yadapanyaya pasati andanibindate duke esamango visudaya. All conditioned things are impermanent. When one sees this with wisdom, then one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the path to purification. Nahi virena virani samanti da kudachanam avirena che samanti esadamo sanantano Hatred is never appeased by hatred. Here at any time, by non-hatred alone, are they appeased. This is the eternal law. Sambhapapase karanam kusalase upasambara sachitna pariyodipanam etam bhudnanisasanam Not doing any evil to undertake what is skillful. To purify one's own mind. This is the teachings of the Buddha. So here you can get a, a flavor of the, the wisdom. And you can also get a flavor of the Pali poetry. Why it's considered poetry. How it aligns with the... Uh, how, how the syllables and the, the meter align. It is used for for its uh, pleasurable sound to, to hear, but also for the memorization. Remember that the Buddhist teachings and the Buddha's words were actually an oral tradition to be memorized by the monks. We spend a lot of time memorizing things as monks. So, in the end we have the, we talked about the Dhammapada, the verses of the Buddha, we talked where it is, it's in the Kutika Nikaya, how it's organized, the stories it represents, the Buddhist poetry, how it's organized, the meter, the syllable patterns and the rhythms, the different topics it covers, the different themes, and a small selection of verses. I also told you about how much I adore the commentarial stories. and how wonderful they are to me, and how we're used, how we're, and how we're using these uh, verses as part of our studies at the 
monastery that I'm at right now, how it's required for us to memorize the entire Dhammapada. This is how important it is. It's traditionally done. It's been translated so many times. And this is why it's an important book. It's an important book for you to know. It's an important book for you to have so that you can read this book and develop, develop your path as a Buddhist, as a Buddhist disciple or as a Buddhist monk depending on who's listening to this. To make sure that you're following the morality according to your level. That means if you're a Buddhist monk, you're following the entire Patimoka and all the small rules. If you're a lay person, if you're a lay serious yogi, then you're following all eight precepts. If you're a regular yogi, also serious, you're following all five precepts, etc. With the foundation of morality, you can practice concentration with a clear mind, knowing that you have done everything properly. And with that clear mind and concentration, you can direct your mind toward seeing mind and matter and the causes of mind and matter, and eventually reaching Nibbana. And may you reach Nibbana safely and quickly. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.